Happy New Year and welcome to the first Rappaport Market comment video of 2024. First, some good news. The Rappaport YouTube channel now has 3,000 subscribers. A big thanks to every single one of you for being part of our community. In case you haven't already, please click on the small bell, that's the subscribe button, to get notifications every time we post a new video. Today, we're going to ask three pressing questions that the industry must answer this year. I also want to know how you would answer these questions, so please share with us your thoughts or insights in the comments section below. A bit of context to start with. For many diamond dealers and manufacturers, 2023 was the worst year on record. American consumers had less money to spend because of inflation and high interest rates. Lab-grown diamonds became all the craze. China failed to recover from COVID lockdowns and inventories of polished in the supply chain became bloated, leading to a huge drop in prices. Things only got slightly better from November onward. Retailers in the US started buying for the holidays and India paused rough imports for two months, resulting in lower inventories. This puts the industry in an uncertain position at the start of 2024. So here's question number one. Is the diamond industry capable of keeping inventories at appropriate levels? When I say appropriate levels, I mean having the right quantity and quality of goods available for the demand that exists at retail. This is an important question right now because India has just started buying rough diamonds again after its voluntary freeze. The first quarter is usually the time when manufacturers restock their rough supplies and retailers restock their polished supplies after the holiday season. But this time, holiday jewellery sales were down 2% year on year according to MasterCard, so it's not clear how many replacement diamonds the market will need. So the industry needs to make sure it doesn't buy too much rough and produce too much polished. But with some predicting a modest recovery in retail sales this year, it also wants to ensure it can take advantage of that demand. This is a very careful dance for the industry. How do you think it will perform? Question number two, is the industry serious about accurate source verification? Consumers are interested in where a diamond comes from, or at least in knowing that it's funding things they support. Russia's war in Ukraine has brought that into focus as we've discussed on this video before. How the industry implements sanctions on Russian diamonds this year will be a test of whether it can give consumers what they want. One of the challenges in finding a way of banning Russian diamonds is that it's so difficult to track polish back to its rough source in a reliable way. The tech solutions are limited, while getting people to prove origin through documentation involves trusting people. And it's not just about Russia, it's about ensuring a jeweler can be honest and open to a consumer about where a diamond comes from. It's also about telling the positive stories of diamonds and being able to show that a diamond contributed to good things, whether that's in Botswana, Canada, or elsewhere. Which brings us to the third and final question. How will the natural diamond sector handle competition from lab-grown diamonds in 2024? In 2023, it didn't cope so well. Until the last couple of months, you could sense the synthetics market eating away at natural diamonds market share. This was especially so in the categories that are most popular with middle-income US consumers, one to two carat lower clarity diamonds. Many people I speak to say the solution is marketing, but of course this requires money and the ability to use that money correctly. The Natural Diamond Council, the NDC, has less money available since Arosa left after Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022. The Beers spent $20 million on a pre-holiday ad campaign that saw the return of a diamond is forever, but the industry is calling out for long-term investment, even if sometimes the people who complain are not willing to pay for it. And then there's the issue of how strong a force lab-grown will be this year. Prices of lab-grown diamonds have fallen so much and consumers might be starting to question whether they're good value in the long term. How do you think the industry will stand up to synthetics in 2024? Let me know in the comments below. This video is brought to you by RapNet, the world's largest and most trusted diamond trading network. If you buy and sell diamonds, RapNet is the right solution for you. Find out more at rapnet.com. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of the week.